Wow, look at that HD picture. Yeah, it's so clear you can even see Ellen DeGeneres' breath. Well, my guest today is uh, Seth Rogen, who's got a new movie out. Now, now, Seth, this movie is hot. It's just hot, hot, hot. Uh, how does it feel to have the hottest film in Hollywood? What the? So if you've watched these videos for a while and remember when I used to do those big uh, retrospective videos, might spin a block on those, I don't know yet, then you probably remember hearing me talk about the aspect ratios that the cartoons were made in. If you're new here and you did not know that, I'm sorry, but we hyperfixate. I've been thinking about this video I saw once by Captain Midnight, HDTV's Ruined Sitcoms. It's a great video. And it talks about how the change in shows like Seinfeld or Always Sunny to be shown or produced exclusively in widescreen can really affect the DNA of the show. I said it's a great video and I really recommend it, but it really got me thinking. A show like Always Sunny lived long enough to have to adapt. And there's honestly so many animated shows that had to do that too. So then I wrote a massive tangent and called it a video, here you go. Today I wanted to look at some examples of animated shows that exist in both formats and compare and contrast which I feel like more captures the essence of what the show is going for. You ready to see the bigger picture real quick? This is... I don't know what this is, I haven't thought of a title yet. Move your mouse or tap the screen real quick. Yeah, that's what this is. Oh. <laughs> really have a plan for this video, just be prepared, all right? I hate shows that cut away from the story for some bullshit. If you're too young to remember when shows were produced in 4x3, stop watching my videos, you're 14. If you're too young to remember when shows were produced in 4x3, here's a quick history lesson. 4x3 was the standard aspect ratio used for TV shows since practically the very beginning. This little box format that I usually put my uh, background behind. Today you watch some shows made in 4x3 and you can actually see the bottom of the characters where the animations cut off. Stuff like Mike Lou and Nog with Baby Blues. We're actually not supposed to see the edges of some of this 4x3 stuff. The bottom and top of your TV was supposed to like eat that. So a lot of shows just really use that to cheat. But yeah, nah, it's, it's all over for that. You do that shit now and some 15 year old is making a thread on Twitter about how animation is dying. For years it was just kind of the same shit and I don't think anybody ever really expected it to change. But then stuff started happening. Disney Channel or Cartoon Network Work would pick up a show, but would also produce it in widescreen even when a lot of their other shows weren't being produced in widescreen. Ed, Ed and Eddie and Billy and Mandy were still being produced in 4x3 since they were made before, but then you have something like Camp Laszlo or Jim Partner that came out in the middle of those shows runs, but started so late that they ended up being produced in widescreen. If you watch that invaded crossover that they did, you'd notice that all of the shows that were created in 2004 and prior are all still in standard definition 4x3. But then you get to the Jim Partner episode or the Camp Laszlo episode and boom, widescreen. And it was just kind of like this for a while. But somewhere around the late 2000s and the early 2010s, there was this real push to make 16x9 or widescreen, the main standard for television. I usually like to track this by when did Family Guy, Simpsons, and King of the Hill have to reanimate their intros? Long live Blob Meg. This led to long running shows like Arthur or Simpsons or Family Guy to adapt. South Park is actually a weird case. It was always made digitally except for the pilot. So when this happened, they just remastered everything since they still had all of the assets. Which, I gotta say, is a pretty fucking bizarre way to watch South Park, and I kind of fucking hate it. Mr. Hanky should not be taking up my fucking screen. This shit got me high. HDTV means new resolution, and new resolution means every cartoon is relentlessly saturated. It's what turned Fairly Odd Parents from this to this, and then this. And then this. I guess 4x3, since it's objectively the older format, it's inherently nostalgic. The shows like Simpsons, or even though it's not a cartoon, Flatbush Misdemeanors, will show flashbacks in that style to really put you in the mind of those eras. Hey Amen. Needs... Yep. Although in Simpsons' case, it is an eight year old flashing back to the fucking 90s. Speaking of which, I think the most recent memory that I have of aspect ratios being a big deal is when Disney Plus first came out. For FXX and that Simpsons World streaming app on the FXX app, 
fuck, all right. They made these little remasters or whatever of the first 19 seasons where they zoom in and crop in order to make the episodes appear like they're in widescreen. My guess is because everybody has HD TVs now. They did this to Seinfeld too and I fucking hate it. It was stupid, but barely anybody had that app but me. So nobody really cared except Simpsons fans. So nobody really cared. But when Disney Plus dropped, these were the versions that they uploaded. And it became the main way to digest the show unless you had the DVDs or files on you. And because of it, composition is lost. Some jokes that were told completely at the top or bottom of the screen are just gone. We start to see it fundamentally ruin the cartoon in some ways. The Simpsons was always a show that really optimized all of the space that it had on camera since it's so gag heavy, AKA, the wrong kind of show to fuck with and crop. This eventually leveled out, and Disney gave everybody the option to switch between the 4x3 original aspect ratio and a new cropped widescreen one. If you're one of those people that prefers the widescreen render of the episodes, let me know why in the comments. I'm not gonna lie, I'm interested. I've never heard anybody that prefers it the other way. Now, if I saw you on the street, I'd probably pelt rocks at you aggressively, but that doesn't mean I don't care. <laughs> I think I said in that Simpsons crossover video, but my personal favorite look for the show was that mid to late teens era. Still in 4x3, but colored digitally. When the Fox cartoon switched to HD, it's like all of them vowed to never touch a fucking thick outline ever again. But it's a shame because the cartoon is so cartoony by design. It really lends itself well to it. I really love whenever they shade stuff in this era too. Everything's just the right amount of saturated. HD Simpsons is definitely the best the series has ever been animated. The character animation is something I really look forward to every Sunday. And the backgrounds in something like Pixelated and Afraid could make a renaissance pitcher die of lead poisoning. And while I like the look of those 4x3 digital seasons more, I don't think the wider ratio does anything to the identity of the show. At least not how I feel like it affects something like Futurama. The Simpsons has always been begging to be cinematic, to be bigger. So them expanding feels less like a drastic change and more like a smooth transition. And I think for that same reason, I feel the same way about Family Guy. Family Guy is one of the only cartoons that I know that specifically did an episode made just to try out the new form. Format. Season 9's And Then There Were Fewer was produced with the intention to be a bigger kind of Family Guy story and test out how far they could go with the little extra real estate that they were given on the screen. Almost like a justification for the format shift. They say it in that Family Guy art book, which I can't take a picture of because I'm not home when I'm recording this. I really recommend rewatching this one with that in mind. So much of it will make so much more sense. But I think since they did this, I never really thought twice about Family Guy taking that leap. It's the only show that made me feel like we were eased into it. Oh, really, Lois? I thought I might drive forward. I thought that, that might be a fun thing to do. Stop fighting! And the following episode opens with this. See, look. Here's what you used to see. Good night, Mike. Good night, Carol. And here's the stuff you missed. I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I think Futurama is one of the ones that I feel like works best in 4x3. But I also won't act like the widescreen ruined the show. Cause nigga COVID did that. I think the film was Bender's big score, especially do a good job feeling big enough in scale to justify the jump to a more cinematic aspect ratio. Well, I mean, the first and the last one do. Billion backs, maybe. And honestly, I'm never watching Bender's the game again, so I'm not even going to check. And I think, like I said about Simpsons, Futurama does beg to be bigger in a lot of ways. But I do think that since Futurama, at least to my understanding, is trying to replicate the vibe of a certain kind of old school science fiction TV show, like Star Trek or something else I don't fucking watch. It being in the same aspect ratio as the shows it's showing love to really makes it fit right in and feel like it's one of those shows. But without that format, it kind of feels like a like a parody or a homage rather than just one of those shows. <laughs> does that sound stupid it's like that uh it's like that cuphead show that i was seeing a lot of clips of floating around not too long ago really going for that rubber hose old school of i work style it looks great and from what i've seen there were a lot of strides taken in the art direction to really push and sell that look but those cartoons aren't in widescreen none of them are so when you have it that way i kind of feel like you're taking away from the authenticity a bit maybe i don't know am i bugging y'all see what i mean but honestly you could even argue that cuphead or futurama being that way just kind of makes it their own thing and you know what Fair. <laughs> That's it. I don't I don't have a rebuttal moving on. I think what I'm landing on though is that most shows tend to look best in the format that they were produced in. And that doesn't always imply that it's the one we grew up with. Because you could say that I'm biased, right, for liking The Simpsons most in 4 by 3 Since the first episode that I ever remember seeing was Deep Space Homer. But I also think Class of 3000 looks best in widescreen. Despite exclusively growing up with the 4 by 3 version. I feel like that might be like an art direction thing. This show is so bright and colorful and full of life, it's almost begging to be viewed as clear as possible. Kim Possible, Jim Partner, Amdrag. 
I lost the file for the clip I'll be using. All shows made in widescreen that most of us grew up with not seeing that way. Without knowing that it's probably the superior way to consume them. Gym partner especially, bruh. Look how good these thick outlines look. Jake, could you be any more uncivilized? Thank goodness I'm not a monkey. Yeah, I don't I don't know why they let them do that either. The colors, the expressions. It's moments like this where I regret turning that shit off back in the day to watch Three's delivery. <laughs> That's not true. I don't even think I watched Three's Delivery. I just needed a funny cartoon to make that bit work. This really does make me wonder though, if there's a world where a four by three cartoon could be produced today and not give off the stench of being up its own damn ass. I saw the trailer for Saltburn in the theater a few times. I'm sure it's a mighty fine movie, but <laughs> bruh, look at some of this shit. It insists upon itself. This shit don't insist upon itself. I don't know, dude. I'm just being fucking mean at this point. A standard across the board can just be like a little boring, I guess. We feel that way about writing and art styles. Aspect ratio is probably at the bottom of the long list of things to switch up and change. But I don't know, man. That doesn't mean that it shouldn't be played with every once in a while. <laughs> like me. It's the right thing to do, like taking out Hitler. <laughs> See, we had a plan for that all along. That shit felt like two hours. <laughs> Nigga, that shit is an hour 30. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah.